friend from Tennessee, Senator Blackburn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. And uh, Dr. Lander, I want to thank you for your phone call and the time that we had uh, to visit. I so enjoyed that. I want to join um, Ranking Member uh, Wicker in his request that the Broad Institute please uh, provide to us that 10 year of donor records. The um, Epstein connection is of tremendous concern to us and we would like to, to have that information. Uh, a question that I have for you in your opening statement, you had said, uh, you know, the OSTP's work will be rooted in equity, tackling issues from STEM inclusion to algorithmic bias. You also state this administration poses big questions like how can science create market driven solutions for climate change? So first question to you is I want you to provide some clarification around your utilization of algorithmic bias. And then secondly, we'll talk about market driven solutions. So thank you, Senator. Those are those are really important questions, and I'm I'm very glad to respond to them. Um, when when a computer scientist uses the word algorithmic bias, they mean that an algorithm is not producing the correct answer because of typically the data that was used to train it, not applying to the circumstance in which it is being used. Um, there, there are many ways that that can occur, but it means the results are not reliable. They, they don't reflect whether the person you're looking at really should get a loan. What they reflect is a data set that doesn't actually describe uh, the person who has come before requesting a loan, for example. Um, I think it's, it's a very important question right now in artificial intelligence, how to be able to verify that programs produce the correct result in circumstances other than the ways in which they were first constructed. I agree with you on the concern with the algorithmic bias. I uh, think that your application to artificial intelligence is so appropriately placed. It is of concern when you look at building these algorithms out, if you are pointing one direction, that algorithm, instead of opening up new potential options to you, it narrows those options that are presented to you. And I will look forward to continuing a conversation about how we change that and how we work with uh, tech, big tech companies to change that. It is not helpful whether it is in research or whether it is in public discourse. Um, I would love for you to talk just a minute. President Biden has been very aggressive in executive orders. And um, I sometimes wonder how this aligns with market-driven solutions in, uh, when you talk about uh, climate, when you talk about energy, um, because what he is putting forward in executive orders does not seem to line up with market-driven solutions. You can look at a variety of different things and look at how the Chinese have so adversely impacted the market when it comes to solar panels or to polysilica being made in the United States. So, um, and then you look at President Biden's executive orders and what he did around the Keystone Pipeline, which by the way, natural gas, a good way to move oil and gas is through a pipeline. And um, I, I look at some of these executive orders and I wonder what the desired outcome is because it does not seem to be a market driven solution. So I'd like for you to bridge that gap between what has been happening by executive order when it comes to fuels, when it comes to energy, 
and what is um, going to become market driven solutions that are affordable for the vast majority of the American people. Well, thank you, Senator. Uh, I think all of us are very concerned about addressing uh, the issues around climate change and technological innovation is a critical part of, of that. That technological innovation ultimately has to include innovations that just make clean net zero carbon energy cheaper than any alternative. In the long run, that will lead to market-driven solutions. And I think science uniquely can contribute in those ways. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, 